Never fear on missing out by clicking that subscribe button and becoming another member of the Babylonian family. Good day, ladies and gents. My name is Songs Rays, back with another legendary guide to bring to you. And today we are bringing you the gun that looks more animal than it does gun. It's the Roaring Umbra. And we've got a nice kind of special tier 3 mod to look at. And we're going to see how that kind of plays into it. So I hope you enjoy be prepared for the gameplay and but first we've got a word from babylon is now partnered with raffled up the one-stop shop to have the chance at scoring yourself some great tech at a low price raffled up has made over 1800 people happy with their competitions ranging from store credit gpus vr sets and even full-on pc rigs to take your game into the next level keep your eye out for mega bundle competitions too for your chance to win several thousand pounds worth of gear all for less than the cost of a chippy if you fancy your chances make sure to use our partner code in the description below and save yourself some money while also supporting us as a channel. Best of luck and enjoy the content. So as we mentioned before, we are today looking at the Roaring Umber Light Machine Gun. Now, the tier 3 mod we'll go over in a bit, so we'll just go over a few of the basic stats of the gun. So mine is an 87.8k firepower one, which is pretty decent. It's obviously not as high as 90k upwards, so it's not a god roll, but it's it, it's definitely passable. So it comes with a 100 round mag size, which is great. The rounds per minute is kind of slow with 500, and because this is a standard variant of light machine gun, it's not going to be increasing the longer you hold down that trigger. The damage is 3300, which is okay, it's passable. You would be looking for something that hits a bit harder, but because it has a 100 round clip size, obviously that's not going to matter too much. You would be just consistently dealing out that damage. Uh, the reload is 2.5 seconds, so it's a bit on the slow side, uh, and the crit multiplier is abysmal at 110%. So in terms of mods, I would stay clear of Embalmer's Rage for this one. The accuracy is okay with 76. The stability is probably its main defining point at 93%, which is great. So obviously your uh, crosshair is not going to be deviated much from where it started but the recoil will be what actually uh, expands the crosshairs for you so the tier 3 mod is kinetic stomp where shots create a seismic shock around you dealing 232,619 damage in a five meter radius and this regens every single four seconds now I've paired this with fortress to be able to receive up to another 43% damage bonus based on my armor I wanted to see if this actually did affect the mod uh, I have a feeling it, it might have done in some kind of capacity because in the gameplay you're gonna see in the background my stomps when I was actually hitting them we're doing anywhere between four to five hundred K damage now obviously I need to do a little bit more testing if it definitely 100% affects it I would like to actually do an episode that fortress covers and what it actually does affect so I'm just trying to get a duplicate of pretty much every single gun in the game just to see what it actually can affect and what it can't so the kinetic stomp is it sounds great on paper the idea that um, you're shooting things and if any kind of like melee enemies get too close to you you'll be able to like uh, shock them away and deal a massive amount of damage every four seconds it's almost like a like a panic button and a very very small kind of cold snap that a technomancer skill has uh, but on paper uh, on paper is it sounds great but when it comes to practicality it's very difficult to be able to get this off um, the idea is that the stomp doesn't come out until you actually connect a bullet with someone so you'll be because this is a light machine gun you'll be aiming downfield 30 40 50 meters and the shock will then happen right next to you uh, and the idea is that you wouldn't really want any enemies to get within that and then to rely on this mod and I think that's kind of where it does fall down a little bit don't get me wrong this is fun to be able to watch and to get it to proc and to be able to like wipe out a, sm a small group of enemies that were charging you down mainly por porphyros uh, or maybe the uh, the slasher kind of ones for the human or humanoid kind of si uh, type enemies but it, it's been, it almost felt like it was out of my control as to when I can get it to proc um, just because uh, obviously as a technomancer I would be aiming to deal long range damage so the shock is just basically pointless I would be mo I'd be mowing things down before they can even get to me so obviously I'm keeping up my damage bonus now that's not to say that this mod wouldn't be very good on other kind of classes so mainly a, trick a trickster or a devastator where they have to get up close to be able to do the damage and to be able to get the healing um, but obviously this wouldn't be very good on this type of gun you would probably want that on some kind of shotgun but then when you factor in what kind of shotguns they are you would want different mods altogether so you probably necessarily wouldn't want to go for this one now on Boomtown on CT10 I had to do a second run on this because I, I, I do try to show off what the mods actually can do uh, rather than just try and blast straight through it and obviously just I, I, my build is mainly focused on firepower and long range why would I want to uh, show, show you a gun that 
then has a tier 3 mod that obviously I'm not showing off to its fullest potential. So I, I'm trying to put myself in a uh, dangerous way to be able to show the proccing, to be able to show you what damage numbers to expect. Uh, and just how useful it actually is. Uh, but as a Technomancer, it's pretty much pointless. You never really want to be using this. Uh, and even as a panic button, you won't want to use this. You would prefer to have Cold Snap, which affects a much larger radius and freezes things for you to then deal extra damage to and potentially make them explode with the Borealis kind of build. So, possibly I'm not using the right class for this. I am currently in the process of being able to get a Devastator up to CT15 to be able to try out a new build, to be able to show off those other guns that are designed for close range, and so you can get a better idea of what a non-firepower techno build would actually be looking like. Um, I would be curious to see how this mod uh, works in in the same kind of way that Moaning Winds does, where obviously you can you can get moaning winds up to a massive amount of damage and that but that goes off a reload whereas this would that go off just purely shots and re uh, like recharges within half the time of moaning winds can i get this to be able to be even close to what moaning winds actually does and if if that is the possibility then yeah this 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 tier 3 mod could actually potentially be viable uh, but for the time being it just doesn't really seem to hit home as to how good it can actually be does it need a buff? Potentially. The gun itself is kind of box standard. It's just an LMG. It doesn't really help you out as much. Obviously, the, the Tier 3 mod and the LMG just kind of contradict each other because the LMG is designed for suppressing and making sure things don't get close to you. And then you've got the mod that actually takes care of things that are right next to you. I guess in some kind of way it is a complement, but because it, it just goes off every time, every time you shoot someone, it, it just doesn't really... There's no control over it. It does feel like it is just cooldown's there, oh it's gone, and then for 4 seconds you are then vulnerable to any of those melee attackers that then come for you. All in all, would I recommend the Auroring Umbra? Well, it has a couple of de defining qualities, like the huge mag size. If you're looking for something to be able to put sustaining fire downfield, or as like a backup weapon if you're going for a close range build, or something like that, that can then deal a little bit of extra damage, or just keep you going until your skills like come back, then this gun's pretty decent. It's not the best choice, I don't feel. I feel like there are better things out there, but this is this is okay. It's, it's definitely not terrible, it's definitely not poop or anything like that, but if you are after the tier 3 mod, uh, I would say that's probably the best part of this. So dismantle away, get that in your library, and I'll do some more testing and I'll come back to you and see if there's some kind of build that I can actually make from that. And that brings us to the end of the Roaring Umbra video. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've learned something useful from the gameplay that's in the background and from me describing my experience with the gun. It's not terrible, I definitely would keep it in your stash if it's something you're not planning to use straight away, uh, but hopefully I can find some way to just break the mod and just see if there's, some, like, there's something out there. I feel, I feel like there is uh, a potential for it and it just needs someone to crack it basically. So that's all i hope you've enjoyed if you have dropped a like and a subscribe on the channel i greatly appreciate it if you haven't already check out the link that's in the description and head yourself over to raffled up and just get you have a look around there and if you do pick up any of the tickets that are on there make sure to include code babble to be able to get yourself a nice little discount on any of those uh, as always guys and girls i hope you've enjoyed keep yourself safe keep yourself well and i shall see you on that next video